visible now? Yes, sir. I hope the screen is visible now. In full screen. Yes. Okay. So that's for uh, formal introduction. So uh, welcome to the problem solving session for the fourth week of the course, Geotechnical Engineering 1. I hope the screen is visible now. So, uh, coming again, I am Yogendra Narayanan. I am a PMR of Research Scholar and welcome to uh, the problem solving session for the fourth week of the course Geotechnical Engineering 1, for which I am one of the teaching assistants, which is offered by Professor Dean Singh from the Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Bombay. So essentially these problem solving sessions are for uh, to make the learners proficient in understanding the concepts taught for the particular or the corresponding week by solving some questions from the previous assignments as well as some questions based on the concept that has been covered in this in that week. So uh, to just to give a brief uh, review of what has been taught in the uh, week 4 is essentially the uh, phase relationships uh, and uh, different types of unit, unit weights, how to quantify them, how to quantify the voids, uh, uh, how, to, uh, how to quantify the various gravimetric and volumetric uh, properties of the soils and followed by the classification of soils starting for fine grain uh, coarse grain soils which is by sieve analysis and an introduction to the uh, classification of fine grain soils through sedimentation analysis of uh, in which hydrometer analysis is a part of it uh, so i hope that uh, these uh, this is the course content that has been that has been covered in the week four of the uh, of uh, of this course. So based on this, there are some problems. Uh, essentially, this session will be a numerical. Uh, some problems will be numerical. So uh, I would encourage the learners to uh, actively participate in solving these questions and. Uh, Post the, uh, and wherever you get confused or wherever you have any uh, clarifications, wherever you need any clarifications, you are very welcome to interrupt me and, uh, and clarify your doubts. So, let us move to the session. So, to start with, the question 1, uh, which among the following has minimum specific gravity? Which among the following has minimum specific gravity? Option A, bentonite. 
Sir, questions are not visible, sir. Questions are not visible. Yes, sir, not visible. Yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Okay. No. It's visible, sir. Now. Now. Now it is also visible, sir. Now you are able to see the question, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Other, Mr. Sony. Yes, sir. Are you able to see the questions? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this question goes this way. Which, which among the following has minimum specific gravity? Option A, bentonite. Option B, quartz. Option C, feet. Option D, place. Then, you minimum specific gravity on the way. Which among the following has minimum specific gravity? Bentonite, quartz, peat, and clays. Can someone respond? Any guesses or any answers? Sir, no idea, sir. The other person? Any idea? Please respond via mic uh, because I, I will not be able to see the chat box since I am presenting. The other person, could you please respond if you have any, uh, any guesses? Okay. So quartz. B. Yes? B options. B quartz. B or D? So B. Quartz. No idea, sir. Yes. Okay. So I uh, so let me clarify this. It is a general uh, it is a uh, the it should be noted uh, that is um, generally organic matter will have a lesser specific gravity compared to others because this quartz is a mineral. Clays are also constitutes of minerals. Bentonite is a mineral. But peat is an organic matter. So generally, it is a, a we find that organic matter has lesser specific gravity than other minerals. Quartz usually the specific gravity will be 2.65. What is the unit of specific gravity? Can somebody respond? No unit, sir. Yes, specific gravity uh, does not have any unit because it is being normalized by gamma S yes, that is uh, solid by gamma water. So that is G. So they, so they have no units. Now, uh, quartz generally the specific gravity will be 2.65. For place, they vary from 2.6 to 2.8. Bentonite, they are slightly lesser, 
they are very uh, they have a range of about around 2.3 whereas peak will be around around 1.7 mil so in general organic presence of organic matter in the soil will in turn reduce the specific gravity of the soil as a whole and if you consider the peat uh, that is a uh, heavy organic matter that comprises of only organic matter its specific gravity is very less so peat is the uh, answer for this hope i am clear and hope you understand Sir, understood. But uh, maximum specific gravity, what, sir? Maximum will be for clays. Okay, sir. And usually, if the soil contains iron content, Fe content, then its specific gravity will be higher. So, uh, that is the metals which are uh, heavy, if they are present, then their uh, specific gravity will be higher. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, now, let us move to the second question. What is the correct relationship between voids ratio and porosity? Option A, E by E plus 1. Option B, E by 1 minus E. Option C, E plus 1 by 1 minus E. And option D, 1 minus E by 1 plus E. Option A, sir. E by 1 plus E. Yes. Uh, the other person? Sir, option A. Do you have, a, uh, do you know how to derive it? Yes. Okay. So, what is the formula for porosity? Volume of voids to the volume of so a uh, volume of soil. Okay. By total volume. Yes, sir. Voids ratio. Void ratio volume of voids to the volume of solids. If you interchange it, you will get the relation E by E plus 1 is equal to porosity. Okay. So, option A is the right answer. So, moving to the next question. In which type of soil core cutter method is preferred? Sir. Question, uh, third question is not visible, sir. Just a moment. No? No, no sir. sir. Okay. So visible. Visible, sir. I think, just Now? Visible, sir. Okay. So, uh, third question. Core cutter method is preferred in which, which type of soils? Core cutter method. Option A, cohesionless. Option B, cohesive. Option C, both. Option D, none of the above. Cohesive soils. Cohesive soils. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, right option is cohesive soils. So now let us extend this question a little bit. Uh, this core cutter method is a technique for determining which parameter? Unit weight or density. In laboratory or field? Field. Field. Uh, what are the 
sand replacement method water replacement बट द कन्वेंशनल टू मेथड्स फॉर डिटरमिनिंग इंसिटू डेंसिटी इज कोर कटर एंड सैंड रिप्लेसमेंट मेथड्स एंड आउट ऑफ दिस मेथड्स व्हिच इज यूज्ड फॉर एनी टाइप ऑफ सॉइल व्हिच इज रिलेटिवली यूनिवर्सल Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, out of these methods, which are uh, which is used for both cohesionless and cohesive soils. Any idea? If you have no idea, you can say that you, you have no issues. No idea, sir. So out of these methods, sand replacement method is used for both cohesionless and cohesive soils. They can be used for both the both the type of soils. So please make a note of it. And core cut type of soil, yes. सैंड रिप्लेसमेंट्स मेथड बोथ दी सोइल्स कोइजेलेस एंड कोइजेल सोइल सर यस एंड कोर कटर इज फॉर कोइजेल सोइल्स ओनली कोइजेल सोइल्स सो इन दिस एज़ फार एज़ दिस क्वेश्चन इज कंसर्न कोइजेल सोइल्स इज द राइट आंसर कैन वी मूव टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Okay, sir. So the white's ratio of a sand sample is 0.7. What will be its relative density? If the minimum and maximum white's ratio are 0.55 and 0.90 respectively, 57 percent, 52 percent, 60 percent, and 55 percent. Can you solve this or? Yes, sir. I I can solve. So. R D will be E max minus E by E max minus E min. Fifty seven sir. Okay. E max will be point nine. Minus E will be at the in situ condition point seven. 
Vmax again point nine point five five. So this will be point two. This will be point three five. That is equal. It will be approximately zero point five seven. That is fifty seven percentage. So option A is the right answer. The second person have you got this? Mr. Sony. Please respond. So can we move to the next question? Yes, sir. Uh, is my slide visible? You are uh, are you able to see the fifth question? No, sir. No. No, sir. No visible, sir. No. Visible, sir. Okay. So, a soil in its compacted state has the following for us uh, following properties. Porosity is point three seven five. Saturation is point nine. Specific gravity is 2.65. What is the water content of the soil? Will you be able to solve this? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the relationship to be used? Uh, e into SR equals to W into G. Okay. How will you get E? And porosity for N is porosity is equals to E by one plus E. Okay. How much E are you getting? No, we, we did not solve it. Zero point six. Zero point six E Q will know. Yes. So twenty point three seven percent. Twenty percent, sir. Zero point six. 
Yes, sir. The other person are you getting this? Yes, sir. Getting, but uh, your writing screen is not visible, sir. Writing screen? Pen is not visible. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now. How is it visible? Writings? Hello? Yes. So now moving to the next question. For the above given uh, parameters, uh, so now please calculate the dry density. What is the relation for dry density? Gamma D is equal to Please complete the relationship. Uh, sir, dry density is formally gamma W into G by 1 plus E. 1 by 1 plus E. is equal to gamma W into G plus E into SR by 1 plus E. Okay, now dry density is there. 1 by 6, it's option 3. Okay. So, this you can take 10. Or 9.81, anything is fine. G is 2.65, and this will be 1 plus 0 0.6. So, this will be approximately 1.66 gram per cc. Or this gamma W, since it is gram per cc, it will be 1. If you are doing it in kilonewton per meter cube, you can use 9.81 or 10. So, uh, while solving these type of questions, uh, it is important to keep in mind the unit in which it is asked. So, if it is in gram per cc, Water's uh, density will be 1 gram per cc and if it is in kilonewton per meter cube, we can take 9.81 or approximately 10. Uh, 
Are you able to understand? So, please keep in mind while solving these questions, what is the uh, units that is uh, presented and what is the units that is being asked. All right? Yes, sir. So, the new person who has joined, you can continue from the next question. Uh, so, these slides and uh, videos will be uploaded in the uh, uh, in the NPTEL interface, you will be able to access it and the videos will be in uh, in YouTube. So, you will be, you will be able to access it anytime and so you can, uh, I would like you to participate uh, from as uh, the previous questions are over from the next question you can participate and solve the questions. Hope I am audible. Can you please respond once? Yes, sir. Okay. So, moving to the sound question. Are the questions visible? No, sir. No, sir. No? Visible. Visible, sir. Okay. So, now... The silt size, the size of the silt particles ranges from option A 0 0.01 to 0 0.07 millimeters, option B 0 0.002 to 0 0.1 millimeters, option C 0 0.002 to 0 0.07 millimeters, option D 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 millimeters. Option C 0 0.002 millimeter to 0 0.70 millimeter. Okay, any other? C option, sir. 0 0.02, C 0 0.070. 0. Okay. So, we know that. So, this is when you convert it into microns, it will be 2 microns to 70 microns. So, less than 75 microns are known as? Fine grain soils. Fine grain soils. And less than 2 microns are known as? Clays. That's uh, right. Clays. Uh, so please keep in mind. Uh, and also, these clays do not confirm that these are uh, the type of soil is clays. The size only dip, uh, here the notion is it is a clay sized particle. And in this silt sized particle, uh, once how we can uh, confirm the presence of clays is we have to check the mineralogy of these samples. If they contain any clay minerals, then, then it is mostly clays. Otherwise, it, these are clay sized particles. This should be kept in mind. Alright? Please respond, otherwise I, I, I could not uh, figure out whether you are able to hear or any issues are there. I understood, sir. Okay, so the option is C. So moving to the eighth question. Why H2O2 is added into uh, to the soil before performing hydrometer analysis? Option A to prevent clogging. Option B as a dispersion agent. Option C to remove the organic content. And option D none of the above. To remove the organic content. Okay. Can you say why H2O2 is used as a uh, agent to remove organic content? Any idea, anyone? No idea, sir. 
So, what is H2O2? Hydrogen peroxide. Okay. So, it is hydrogen peroxide. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is a, a strong oxidizing agent. Please note it down so it will be useful. The hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent. H2O2 is an oxidizing agent. So when you add H2O2 to the soil containing organic matter, the organic content in the soil will be oxidized. So this oxidation of organic content removes them. So that is why H2O2 is being preferred. Sir, once explain. So H2O2 is an oxidizing agent. So when this oxidizing, when H2O2 is added to the soil, the organic content in the soil gets oxidized due to its reaction with H2O2. So that is how uh, the organic matter is removed. So since it is not only H2O2, any oxidizing agent, any strong oxidizing agent can be added to the soil to remove its organic, organic matter. And why H2O2 is added? Because we don't oven, oven dry the samples, we just air dry them. So in air drying, organic matter will not be removed. Are you able to understand? Please respond if you have any doubts. Sir, oh, yeah. uh, sir uh, in woven drain, uh, organic content is removed or not, sir? Woven drain. Woven drain with, if you woven dry the samples, organic content will be removed. So, but why, uh, why we are not woven drying is that woven drying will remove the adsorbed water in the place also. So, that we don't need that we do not need to remove it. That is why fine grain soils are usually air dried before conducting hydrometer analysis. So, yes, sir, yes, sir. if you take coarse grain, you can own dry. That is, you can own dry at 100 degree to 105 degree for 24 hours. In case of fine grain, if you dry at 100 to 105 degrees, the adsorbed layer also will be evaporated. So, that, that will completely change the behavior of the place. So, that, so that we, don't, we do not want the adsorbed layer to be evaporated. That is why we just air dry the samples. Air drying does not remove the organic content. So, to remove the organic content, we are adding oxidizing agents. One of the oxidizing agents is H2O2. So, the right option is C. Hope I am clear this time. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Let us move to the next question. Which among the following statement is incorrect? Option A, meniscus correction is always positive. Option B, temperature correction is negative when soil solution temperature is below the calibrated temperature of hydrometer. Option C, dispersion agent correction is always positive. Option D, both A and B. Any idea? No idea, sir. 
the other persons any idea please respond if you have uh, if you have any idea please respond otherwise i can explain it Let me explain it. See, there are three types of correction in hydrometer, uh, which has been, which is three each of the option. So meniscus correction, temperature correction, and dispersive agent correction. Now, for to understand these corrections, you need to understand uh, the uh, structure of hydrometer. So, this is a stru structure of hydrometer, it will be 0 0.995. It will be 1.000. Will be zero zero five, be zero one zero, and it goes on, and there will be a bulge at the bottom. So, if you place it in a beaker, there will be water. Uh, that is, uh, you will place it in the slurry. That is, uh, water containing the soil. Am I right? Can you understand? Please respond. Um, sir. Yes. I don't. Uh, we don't know. Any idea on this? So please exp explain, sir. Okay. So we need to understand how the hydrometer looks. Hydrometer looks like this. Like you will have lead balls. Okay. You have to listen carefully, otherwise it will be very confusing. So, and it will be calibrated, uh, that is, there will be markings. Please respond. So, it will be marked from 0 0.995, 1 1.000, 1 0.005. 1 1.010, 1 1.015, 1.020, 1.025, 1 1.025, and finally 1.03. There will be markings like this. All right. Okay. Please respond. Okay, sir. Now, what you will be doing is, you will be preparing a slurry of soil and after thorough mixing, you will place the hydrometer in this soil. Alright.
ओके ओके सर एंड एज द पार्टिकल सेटल्स दिस विल बी देयर विल बी सॉइल पार्टिकल्स एवरीवेयर इन द सॉल्यूशन एज द पार्टिकल सेटल्स द हाइड्रोमीटर विल मूव डाउन सो एट रेगुलर इंटरवल्स यू कैन टेक द रीडिंग्स ऑफ द हाइड्रोमीटर and the calculation part uh, now it is not necessary in the next uh, next week lecture it will be explained clearly now we are concentrating only on the uh, this display of hydrometer right so when the soil particle settles the hydrometer also settles down fine this is the working principle of hydrometer am i clear if you are noting down you can note it down afterwards so please respond now Okay, sir. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Understand. Now, here, here, there will be three corrections. First, let us see meniscus correction. Meniscus is this one. If you zoom it out, it will be like this, right? okay okay sir now the actual level of water is what i draw with uh let me the dotted lines okay the actual reading okay please follow me step by step but the reading you see will be this one are you able to get it actually the man If you have any questions, please ask. No, sir. No means I cannot. You are unable to understand, or you are able to understand. Under understand, sir. Now you will be able to see this, but you your actual value should be. For example, if you 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 will be able to see one. But the action actual value should be point one point zero zero five. So what you will add it? You will be adding it, right? You will be adding point zero zero five, right? Sir, it's added or subtraction, sir? See, because of what? What? This meniscus is the right curved surface. Hello. Yes, sir. This meniscus is the right. This curved surface is known as meniscus. Now, you will be able to see this 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 line. Yeah. This is what you will be able to see, okay. and you will note note down your value as one point zero zero zero. But yes. the actual value will be this part, line B, which is actually one point zero zero five. So the value you have noted down is one point zero zero zero, and the actual value is one point zero zero five. So you will be you will be adding point zero zero five to the to your reading. so this is the correction so this correction 
will always be positive. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. So this option is true. Now coming to the temp temperature, if you have any doubts, you can ask. So once repeat. Okay, sir. Okay, now uh, see this is the uh, now let us uh, see the line A. Are you able to see the line A? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this line A is the value you will be noting down. This is the value you can see from uh, outside uh, in the hydrometer. So you will keep the hydrometer, and after some time you will be you will you will see the when you note down the reading, you will see this value because you will be able to see this only line A. Okay, if you have done some uh, experiments in Burek, you would have, you could relate it. When you see the Burek. Uh, they will be able to, uh, the instructor will say uh, to see the upper meniscus and lower meniscus values. Have you come across this? Yes, sir. Now, this is the upper meniscus value. This is, this is the value you will be able to see. So what you will do, you in the notebook you will just write 1.000 at a particular time. But actually the water level is line B only. That is the slurry level is line B only. Which is 1.005. So what you, what you have to do to get the right value? You have to add, in some. add 0 0.005, which is known as meniscus correction. Are you able to understand? Yes, so, sir. Yes. So, this option A, the statement will be always true. Meniscus correction will be always positive. Now coming to the temperature correction, now this hydrometer is entirely valid for 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now what will happen when you increase the temperature? Any idea? No, sir. So, on heating, water will tend to expand. Right? So, initially, this is the water level. Now, due at 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. Now, when you increase the temperature, water will tend to expand and the level will reach up to heat this time. This. Let us say 30 degrees. Now, now what will happen to the correction? Hello? Please respond. Yes. 
Are you able to understand? No, sir. See, on increasing the temperature, what will happen to water? Water will tend to expand, right? Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Now, you have to, whatever the temperature, whatever room temperature you are conducting the experiment, you have to bring, you have to note the value corresponding to 20 degree centigrade. That is the ideal temperature to conduct the experiment. So, you cannot con control the temperature, but you can control the volume. That is the value that you are noting down. So, if you if you if you are doing an experiment at the daytime with at the temperature of 30 degree centigrade the value will be this which is marked with red red uh, which is demarcated with red color ink all right yes Okay, but you you need to uh, uh, convert the value corresponding to 20 degree centigrade. When it is 20 degree centigrade, it will be obviously below the uh, red mark. So what you will do to uh, get the actual value? See, you will be seeing around 1, here it will be around 1.002. And the actual value will be 1.005. What you will do to what will this is observed value. This is actual. So what you will do? Add it 0 0.003. Yes, you will add 0 0.003. So when the temperature is higher than 20 degrees the correction will be positive. Now let us consider the temperature you are conducting the test at 10 degrees. Now what will happen? Water will tend to contract. So the level will be the here. Right? So what will be? Now it will be 1.008. But the actual value should be 1.005. What you will do? Subtraction 0, 0, 0. 0.003. Yes, you should sub subtract 0. 0.003. Then this temperature correction will be negative. This is positive. So the option asked here is temperature correction is negative when the soil solution temperature is below the calibrated temperature of the hydrometer. Calibrated temperature is 20 degree centigrade. Sir, your voice is breakdown, sir. Hello? Am I audible now? Sir, now it's audible, sir. Ah, so, the calibration temperature is 20 degree centigrade. When the question asked is, when the solution temperature is below, that is this, this condition, the correction will be negative. So we have seen that the uh, correction will be negative. So this statement is right. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir, I understood. Okay. Now, you will be adding dispersion, dispersive agents, right? Sodium hexametaphosphate. Do you remember from the lecture? No, sir. So, dispersive agents, are you able to see this question? Being fluctuated to fluctuated. Yes, yes, yes. This is a dispersive agent is deflocculating agents. So, if you consider a thick uh, combination of various grains, if you add these agents, it will disperse into individual grains. 
Are you able to understand? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. This will disperse the grains. So the one of the common agents used for this purpose is sodium hexametaphosphate. If you yeah, this, if you don't remember, you please revisit the lecture. The dispersive agent used is sodium hexametaphosphate. So when you add this, the flocculated material or a clogged material will be dispersed. It will be divided into several individual particles. Right? Okay? Okay, sir. Now, you will be adding this... Uh, yes. Okay. Now, you will be adding this solution. When you add this solution, the density of the solution will be increased. Okay? Please respond. It is a bit confusing. You have to respond. I don't know whether you are understanding or not. So, please respond if you are not understanding. Okay, sir. Now, uh, I think you understood till the densities, density will increase on adding dispersive agents, right? You understood or not? Why, sir, adding dispersive agent density increases? So, you are adding extra uh, powder kind of thing. What happens, for example, if you add salt in water? Its density will increase, right? Are you able to understand? Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, it is simply, this dispersive agent will be a powder. It is a salt kind of thing. When you display it in wa water, it will tend to increase the density. Now, let us consider two conditions. This is the two uh, containers. One is filled with pure water, one is filled with this dissolved water. This is one, this is two. Okay? Okay? Hello? Yes, sir. Now, this density row 1 will be lesser than row 2. Alright. Now, you are inserting hydrometer in both the cases. Now, what will happen to the readings? Let us say here the reading is 1.000. What will be the reading here? It will be the hydrometer will go down or go up. If you have any idea, you can say, otherwise, you can say that. If you have no idea, you can say it frankly, no issues in that. I can explain. No idea, sir. Okay. So, when the density of the solution increases, the hydrometer tends to move upwards. When it moves upwards, the readings tends to decrease. 
reading tends to increase. If it is 1, it will be approximately 1.005. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Now, uh, now this is the actual value. Now, what you will do to bring it down to the actual value? So, let me explain it clearly. So, by adding the salt, you have you have destroyed the purity of the solution which will affect the accuracy of your readings. So, when in, in the absence of salt, the actual value should be 1. But due to the addition of salt, due to your disturbance, ex external disturbance, you are reading a value of 1.005. Will you be able to uh, uh, this part can I explain in Hindi or Hindi? Yes. The other person? Are you comfortable with I don't, I don't know Hindi. Okay. So, so Hindi is ruled out. So, are you just listen to me carefully? See, this is the ideal condition you want. Okay. But you are creating this condition due to the addition of salt. Okay. I am explaining step by step. I expect you to uh, respond if you understand each, each uh, statement. Sir, your voice is... Uh... Hello? Yes, sir. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, let me repeat it. So, the situation one is the condition you need to achieve. Okay? I would like to, uh, you, I would expect you to respond for each statement so that I can be sure that you are following. They are following. Okay, this is the condition that is need to be, uh, that is the actual condition. But you are creating a condition due to the addition of salt as this second condition. Okay. Understood or not? Understood, sir. Now, the value here you have noted is 1.1 and the impure condition is 1.005. So, to bring it down to actual condition, what you will be doing? Uh, subtraction. You are, you have zero to point minus 0 0.005, you have to subtract. So, the correction will be? Negative. Negative. But the option given is always positive, which is not right. So, this is the incorrect option. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. So, uh, yes, sir. Understood. I hope that uh, the correction part is clear, all the types of corrections. And let us move to the next question. We are lagging behind it. Okay, sir. If soil particle diameter 
decreases by a factor of 2, what will happen to the settling velocity? It is Stokes law. If soil particle, if soil pa particle diameter decreases by uh, by half, that is by a factor of two, what will happen to the settling velocity? What is the relation between the diameter and velocity? Velocity is directly proportional to d square. Velocity is directly proportional to d square. So, when you decrease velocity, uh, when you decrease uh, that is when you decrease the diameter by 2, what will happen to the velocity? <laughs> Decreases by how much? Decreases. Oh, no, diameter decreases by anta? By 2. Remain constant. See? Remain constant. How we do that? Sir, decreases by force. See, velocity is directly proportional to d square. Right? When diameter is decreasing by 2, see, let us consider uh, uh, velocity is approximately uh, 24 meter per second when the particle diameter is 14. Decreases 14. Uh, decreases 14. Decreases 4 times. Yes, if it, if it decreases, diameter decreases by 2. Uh, velocity should decrease four times. So, option D is the right option. Let us move to the next question. So, what is the relationship between sphericity, roundness and rigidity? Any idea? No idea, sir. Okay. So, usually, sphericity and roundness, the average of sphericity and roundness will be rigidity. Okay. So, Option A is the right option. Alright? Okay, sir. Okay. Um, moving to the next question. The air content of a soil mass at complete saturation is how much? Complete saturation is 100%. What will be the air content? Zero. 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 Zero percent. Moving to the next question. So I think this question is also slightly extended version of the relative density problem which we solved here. So, the dry unit weight of a soil fill is 15.8 and the specific gravity is 2.65. The maximum and minimum void ratios are 0.88 and 0.42 respectively. The relative density of the soil is. Can you solve? Yes, sir. How will you proceed now? Uh, relative density formula is equals to E max minus E by E max minus E minimum. We know that E max and E minimum. And now we can solve E where uh, uh, we use formula gamma D is equals to gamma W into G by 1 plus E. Okay. So solve E1. 
Please solve the puzzle and let me know the option. If you have solved, uh, you can try the next question. Uh, give me just a minute. I will be back in one minute. All right. Okay, sir. Have you solved the question? Yes, sir. How much are you getting? 52%. Okay. The other person, Mr. Swami? Yeah, sir. Sir, yes, sir. Yes. No, sir. Sir, I can't do it. What are you doing? Sir, यहाँ पे 15.8 किलोमीटर पर मीटर कर दिया है, ये बीट पर यूनिट दे दिया, तो फॉर्मूला से क्लिक नहीं है। गामा डी इस गिवन 15.8, राइट? यस। और जी इस गिवन 2.65, राइट? नाउ Gamma D is equal to Gamma W into G by 1 plus C. From that e. you can find E, right? Okay, sir. Gamma W you can take as 9.81 or 10, whichever it is. Accurate value is 9.81. What is the value of E you are getting? E is equal to? 0 0.64 0.64 Now RD will be E max minus E divided by E max minus E mu. So now we have to if we put it point E two minus point six four divided by minus E two. Will be 
Always please remember these fundamental relationships. First is SE, SE equal to WG and uh, for gamma you can just remember the total total gamma value that is bulk gamma W uh, into G plus SE divided by 1 plus E. Now if you put saturation as 1 you will get saturated if you put saturated at 0 you will get dry so it is better to remember this and convert into whatever unit weight you want please don't forget this this will haunt you throughout the course okay Shall we move to the next question? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Shall we move to the next question? Yes, sir. So, next question is a yes or no statement. Uh, the properties of soil is given. Uh, are you able to see or not? No, sir. Question number 14? No. Is my screen visible or not? Yeah, visible. Then now you are able to see question? Ah, question 14. So it is an S or no statement. The properties of soil are given uh, where the porosity is 0.25. Specific gravity is 2.65 and water content is 15 percent. So the question asked is at this uh, conditions will the soil sample exist or not? How will you proceed? Any idea? If you have anything in mind, you can say. Yes, sir. How will you proceed? S equal to W into G. Okay. So, in that case, the saturation will be known as the state. So, if we exist or not exist, then we will get. How much value of saturation we are getting? Yes, sir. Solve it. Uh, the saturation is equals to one uh, 116.9 percent is 116 1.5 yeah. should come now okay for us it is right uh, e. ah right right, right. 1.2 uh, 1.2 so yes, can, can saturation exist greater than 100 no sir so then what is the answer no, no exist. Okay. The other person, are you able to understand? Yes, sir. So, saturation will be greater than 100%, which is practically impossible. So, the statement is no. Alright. So, moving to the next question.
Are you able to see the question? Yes, sir. So the density and water content are given, which is 18.4 kilonewton per meter cube and 8 percent. And the maximum and minimum dry density is given. So the first question is calculate the dry density. Please calculate the dry density. I have given the relationship earlier. Also, please compute it fast and let me know. Have you calculated? Yes, sir. How much are you doing? But, sir, EQ value. Sir, EQ value. See, this is not the dry density, it is the bulk density and water content are there. So, what is the relation? Gamma bulk is equal to gamma dry into 1 plus W. Sorry, this relation I did not give earlier. So, uh, that is in this uh, uh, session. So, please make use of this relation. So, 13.12 kilonewton per meter cube. How, many, how much? 17.03. 13. It will not be 13. This is gamma bulk. 33. This is gamma bulk. You need gamma dry. This is not... Uh, the given value is not dry density this is bulk density okay so it will be 18.4 equal to gamma d into 1 plus 0 0.08 so gamma d will be 18.4 divided by 1 plus 0 1.08 will be 17.037 all right yes sir kilonewton per meter cube now can you calculate the relative density or do you Do you know the relationship in terms of density? How it is calculated? If you know, sir, is zero point three three three. You are close, but uh, can you say the relationship? Uh, it is equals to one by gamma d minimum minus one by gamma d by 1 by gamma d minimum mi minus 1 by gamma d max yes the ma maximum is 20 and one uh, minimum is that is 1 by 
gamma minimum gamma d minimum minus 1 by gamma d by 1 by gamma d minimum minus 1 by gamma d minus so it will be 1 by 16 minus 1 by 17.03 How much you are getting? Zero point three zero. It will be thirty percent percent, thirty point five percent. Are you getting? Yes, sir. Let us move to the next question. Hope I am clear. Yes, clear. Okay. Let us move to the next question. So, the voids ratio of the sample is 0.35. What will be its specific volume? Uh, 1.35 mm. so The specific volume will be 1 plus E E So 1 plus 0 0.35 so This is the right up So coming to the next question Assuming the shape of grains to be spherical The voids ratio corresponding to their loosest state would be Zero point nine one. Okay. Do you know how it is got? No, sir. I think I uh, let me explain it so that you need not remember the values. So, loosest state is when the grains are arranged like this cubical arrangement right yes so if you take a cube minimum there will be there should be two layers in this right so the number of grains will be eight Right? Yes, sir. Miss Vanita, are you able to understand? Yes, sir. So, what will be the Vs? So, voids ratio is uh, voids ratio is V V by V S. So what will be V S here? Eight into what is the volume of sphere? Four by three by D by two cube. So, will be 4 by 3 pi d cube. This is volume of solids. According to 0 by 3. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0.91 in a glass lock. Fifth day. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Now we know Vs. Now you need to cal calculate Vv. So we cannot calculate Vv directly. So what we will do is we will calculate 
This is the cube. So there will be two units attached here. So what will be the dimension of one side? Hello. Are you able to understand? Hello, are you able to understand? Yes, sir. So, what will be the dimension of one side? It will be 2D, right? Are you getting it or not? Getting sir. So what will be the volume now of the cube? It will be 8D cube. So 32 8 by 3 by D cube. Now, now you you can substitute these values here to get the voids ratio. You have eight d cube minus four by three five d cube divided by four by three five d cube. You will be getting point nine one. Those who have joined, uh, I think you can follow from the next question since this question is already under this one. Those who are uh, involved in this question, are you able to understand? Please respond. Sir, understood. Let us move to the next question. So, match the type of soils with their maximum particle sizes. This I think you can do it faster. Please reply faster. Uh, clay is a 2 microns. Okay. 
and uh, sand uh, sand seventy uh, five mm no and gravel ah uh, no 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 sand is four point seven five mm okay and gravel is seventy five mm okay and the silt is seventy five microns hmm. that is right. So clay will be two microns, silt will be seventy five microns, sand will be four point seven five millimeters, and gravel will be seventy five millimeters. So this is a straightforward question. So moving to the next question, assign the correct type of gradations to the corresponding figures. So you have to say whether it is a well graded or poorly graded or gap graded. So which will come to which one? First one is gaply graded. Okay. And the uh, second one is un uh, uniformly graded. Okay. Third one is well graded. Okay. Can you? Uh, can anybody say why it is? Uh, Gap graded, uniformly graded, or well graded. Uh, a gap graded part. Uh, is the some size of the particle is missing. Okay. And the uniformly graded, same size of the particles is more. Right. Well graded soil, all type of the all size of the particles of is there. Hmm, that is true. Does anybody have any confusions? No, sir. Others also please respond. So this will be gap graded or step graded. This will be uniformly graded or poorly graded. This is well graded. So I hope uh, everyone understands this. So moving to the next question, a sieve analysis on a sand sample was conducted, and the D60, D30, and D10 were determined to be 0.8 mm, 0.4 mm, and 0.1 mm respectively. Coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature, respectively, are. What is the relationship for? What is the uh, expression for coefficient of uniformity? What is the expressions for C U and C C? Uh, coefficient of uniformity is equals to d sixty by d ten. Okay. Coefficient of curvature is equals to um, d square thirty by d sixty into d ten. Okay. Now, using this expression, solve it quickly and say the answer. First option, sir. The C U is eight. Sir, comma two. Eight and C is equal to two. Are others getting the same answer? Please respond.
Okay. The correct option is eight and two. So this will be point eight by point one. And this will be point four square by point eight into point one. So this will come as eight, and this will come as zero point one six. By zero point zero eight, which will be two. So option A is the right option. So moving to the next question. Hydrometer analysis is based on the principle of. Which law governs? Which on which law is hydrometer analysis based? This you can tell quickly. Stokes law. Any other option? No idea, sir. So, hydrometer analysis has to relate. Particle diameter with velocity. That is, it has to relate. Bragg's law is for X-ray diffraction. Coulomb's law is deals with the charges. Ohm's law is deals with the current. Stokes' law relates velocity, terminal velocity to diameter. So the right option is Stokes law. So moving to the next question. This we have seen. Which of the following chemicals is are used as dispersive agents? So for the new joiners, uh, dispersive agents. If you contain, if you have a soil mass in which the grains are attached to each other or are flocculated with each other. So, for determining the particle sizes, you have to make it make them into individual uh, grains. So, to do that, instead of mechanically breaking them, uh, in the slurries we had uh, during hydrometer analysis, we make slurries in which we have add dispersive agents. So, the most commonly used dispersive agents is sodium hexametaphosphate. So option C is the right option. So the next question. Laboratory. Sir, once C. repeat, sir. See, the dispersive agents are uh, see when you hydrometer analysis are usually. Uh, Conducted for fine grain soils. So when you take a fine grain soil lump, there will be uh, there will be a situation that several grains are attached to each other and they will form a lump. So to get the actual particle size, you have to break those lumps and convert it into individual grains. So that and also in hydrometer analysis, we'll be using it as a slurry. So instead of mechanically breaking them, we just add some agents, chemicals, which acts as, which is known as dispersive agents to convert flocculated structures to dispersed particles, several distinct particles. So one of the common, very common agents is sodium hexametaphosphate. If you add these agents, the lumps, clay lumps will be clay or that soil lumps will be uh, converted to several individual particles. So then each particle will be settling 
based on the sizes and you can note the you can do the further uh, determination of particle size. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Let us move to the next question. A sieve analysis on soil sample was performed. Uh, out of 500 grams, 200 was retained in 600 micron sieve. 250 gram was retained on 500 micron sieve. And the remaining 50% was retained on 425 micron sieve. Compute the effective sieve size. What is effective sieve size? Or effective particle size? Effective sieve size is D10. Okay. Here which is D10? Which is D10? Zero point nine micron. Hmm. So, first you calculate uh, how much is ten percent of five hundred. It is fifty, right? Yes. So D ten is that fifty grams should pass through that. Hmm. Right? Yeah. Are you able to understand? Yes, sir. So here, twenty grams, two hundred grams was retained. That six, there are three sieves, six hundred microns, five hundred microns, and four twenty-five microns. Now you have retained weight and passing weight. Now 200 gram was retained here. Passing is 300. Now in mm -hmm. out of 300, 250 is retained here. Passing is 50. Out of this, 50 is retained here. Here it is 0. So which is the D10 value? <laughs> Hello, are you able to understand? Yes. So, which is the D10 value? There is nothing to calculate, you can directly say. Uh, uh, 500 microns. 
so 50 percent 50 grams that is 10 percent is passing through this sieve size so that means this is d10 so similarly you can calculate uh, d60 which is 600 microns and cu will be d60 by d10 which will be 600 by 500 1.25 1.2 are you able to understand yes sir Over. Uh, if you have any doubt, sir, I have a small doubt. Yes, yes. Sir, in assignment, in assignment uh, the answer is not uh, assignment 4 uh, in question number think, five, uh, 4. The option is not there, sir. What I do? So this, I think you can, uh, in your MPTEL course uh, uh, dashboard, you will have an ask, ask a question option, right? In that, you can post your question that we will be responding. Okay, okay, sir. Any other doubts? No, sir. Some more questions are there, if possible, we can discuss in the next session. So, with this, we can conclude this session. And uh, hereafter, the uh, sessions will be mostly numericals. So, please keep your calculators while attending. And also, please, uh, while solving, please involve in solving it. Uh, so, because... And unless you respond, I, I, I have no idea whether you understood or not. And how to explain it in a better way, I have to figure it out. So, I request you to be uh, more interactive uh, from the next sessions. It will be purely numericals, numerical. So, with this, uh, if you have any doubt regarding this, you can go through once and you can ask in the next sessions also. And uh, those who have joined little late, these videos will be uploaded in YouTube and the links will be shared with you. So you can uh, go through those links for the earlier problems. Uh, that is all. So thank you. Let us meet next week. So next class is week or is this? Yes, I am not getting it. So next class. Same, every Saturday, 5 to 7. Okay, sir. Every Saturday, 5 to 7, without any, there will be no suspensions of classes, nothing. It is compulsory and compulsory in the sense, uh, that timing is fixed. You can attend. Every Saturday, 5 to 7. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, all.